Ciao a tutti. I barely made it on set today because we have a tour going on, a group of wonderful people, and we were in Otto Brata, and there was a sheep jam, traffic jam, sheep traffic jam blocking the road. So I barely made it, but here I am. Four minutes ago, she made it. I was sitting here saying, okay, I'm going to have to go on by myself, but she comes bursting in like she always I'm does. I'm here. I'm here. So it's the funniest thing. So Esther we went, the hurricane. She's here. I, I've been called that before. That's yeah. right. So we have a beautiful group here. Some people from Boston, some from Florida, some from New Jersey. Great group. And I got to tell you the funniest thing. So I told the bus driver, I mean, our driver to drop me off first to do the show, obviously, and told them to take the rest to Achitrezia. And Mary Grazia de Cola. See, I got your name. She goes, what are you going home to get a quickie <laughs> before dinner? I was like, what? No, I'm going to go do the show and then I'll see you. How funny is that? What do you mean a quickie? A quickie, you know, a quickie. Good so Lord. I'm doing a quickie show. We're doing a quickie show. No, seriously, it's a great group. We're in Ottobrata. I thought you'd get a lot out of that. I'm trying to process what you're saying. A quickie? What is that? Sicilians don't do quickies, Esther. Oh, really? No, they go for length, 150, <laughs> 200 yards. What is that quickie? It's not in our DNA. Okay, that was funny. <laughs> anyway, so we were in Ottobrata, and we're going to have a great video for you. It is the largest, one of the largest gastronomical tours in southern Italy. I you mean, actually you mean feast, a feast a festival. festival Monthly, thank yeah. you. Uh, in southern Italy, and it goes every October only on Sunday. It's a full day event. There's music, there's all types of foods, there's sweets, there's liqueurs, there's wine, there's chestnuts, there's uh, the harvest. We saw a lot of mushrooms and things like that. Olives are being harvested. Um, right now is the period for the apples. Um, so it's a beautiful time, and it's a scene that you'll see in a lot of places here in the fall. Them roasting the chestnuts and selling the fall harvest. But our guide today, Valentina, said something really beautiful that I really appreciated. She goes, you know, this festival is kind of like a rebirth. In fact, fall in Sicily is a little bit of a rebirth. And we're like, oh, very interesting. What do you mean? Well, because in the summer, it is so hot here and everything's burnt and, you know, what do we get? Watermelon and, all, you know, melon and stuff like that. Then when the harvest, it's fresh, it's a rebirth. You've got the olives, the grapes, the chestnuts, the mushrooms and all the fall products. And the weather is a little bit nicer. So a lot of people were out uh, today and even in October and late October, it's been like 70 low 80s under the sun so i like that what do you guys think I'll fall you, is a rebirth here in sicily for hmm. those who are fortunate enough to be here on holiday the last two weeks the weather has been it's been the best all year it's been in the 70s uh during the daytime and in the in the evening it goes down a little bit you ought to make a mental note that if you decide to come to sicily on a future trip the month of October is really a spectacular month. There hasn't been no rain at all either. It's been I agree with beautiful, you. beautiful. I agree. Weather. It's definitely one of the best. Now, yeah. let me go back to this Otto Brata, which is, I, we say Oktoberfest, but there's no beer drinking there. It's just a celebration of Sagra of uh, all the foods and all the produce. Was it packed? It is packed. Yeah. So here's my advice for you if you're going to come. By the way, this is the 43rd annual. Here's my advice. So don't come in the morning and definitely not during lunch. Come after lunch because, you know, people are starting to empty out a little bit. So you know, Wes, you're right. And maybe we should do that next year instead of going to in the morning because it gets really packed. I remember when we, for when I started first doing the tours when you before before Esther, that's called P.E., Priesta. B E or Pre? P is in Peter. P E. Oh, you don't know. Priesta. Oh, I can do B E. I'll do B E. Um, there'd be, you know, a few thousand people there and you'd be able to stroll up the streets. Nowadays, it's, it's you know, it's breathing a lot of economic life into Zephyr and Della Edna. And yes, I'm sure it is. And all the, that, that road going up from Via Grande there, those places are probably doing, you know, uh, companion business, whether people stopping for lunch, 
gas stations, food sellers, etc. Honey, 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 that's yeah. another product I forgot to mention. There are a lot yeah. of honey there and different types of honey, eucalyptus, uh, Mille Fiore, which is a thousand flowers. You have the orange, the lemon honey, um, the black bee honey, the chestnut honey, all types of honeys. And the interesting thing is that they all have different medicinal uses. So if you have a throat ache or if you have a fever or something like that, honey is off the charts good for you. The other thing that I really love is that there were the basket weavers there. And we learned about the importance of basket weaving in Sicily and how each one of the baskets has a different use. So uh, one shape of a basket would be for grapes. Another shape would be for oranges. There are even baskets that hold wine or um, or aceto, uh, vinegar um, bottles so the sun doesn't hit it. So we learned a little bit about that. And there were a lot of people working with, um, not aluminum, bronze bronze, there were painters, copper. copper. Um, so for me, you know, Sicilians are very, very religious. So of course, our festivals, our religious festivals are very important. But it warms my heart that yearly there are sagras. So sagras are festivals celebrating a certain food. Sagra of pesce espada, swordfish, sagra of strawberry, um, a, a cachofi, sagra of cannoli, sagra of scacciata, of pizza, of everything, just to celebrate the foods that they eat and harvest. And I love that. Today in Tre Castani is a sagra of the, the chestnut. Of the, Last of the weekend. Kassani. It was this weekend, too. It's this two weekend, week, too. Yeah, it was this weekend, too. But Zephyrana is really known for the rest of the year, obviously, for their honey producers. The, the mm -hmm. Avery's there are unbelievable. But their sausages and things made of pork, uh, because that's what the black nero, uh, what are those things called? The, the swine up there, the boars. The yeah, boars. they come from there or Nebrodi? Yeah, the Nebrodi area. Uh, they're just terrific. And also for their art, they have wonderful art as well. So... And the yeah. beautiful cathedral. Yeah, it's, it's just a, a great it's a, town. It's a good time. I have a couple of housekeeping announcements I wanted yeah. to make before we uh, take any questions. Uh, somebody uh, sent me an email a couple of weeks ago. I was talking about they, they're going to raise the uh, requirements if you come here on an elective visa. Let me repeat what I said. Right now, it's about $38,000 for a couple. Okay, If you go to get an elective visa on your application, however... Next year, it gets bumped up to 76000 And the reason I had made that announcement a couple of weeks ago is at least three and possibly four of the local consulates in the United States are already using the higher number. So you, hmm. you need to check that, okay? And the other thing is, big rumor is that the golden visa, that's the visa where you um, get in, involved in... Uh, with something with a half a million uh, euro and you automatically get a visa here, that's going to go away as well. So far, Spain, Portugal, and Greece uh, have eliminated it this so last this year. So this is the EU thing? No, it's, it, it has to, it's country by country. It has to do with, Esther, it has to do with, uh, again, people abusing it and laundering money with these large mm -hmm. amounts of money through it. And it looks like Italy uh, is going to eliminate, eliminate that as well. Okay. All right. All right, so that's I wanted to clarify a, that somebody a, got confused, and I'm sorry if I confused uh, somebody, but I'm confused anyways. But no, seriously, so that's what the situation is right now. Okay, but check with your consulate because they may have already raised it. Okay. Raised it. Okay. Okay, we're going to open up to questions if you guys have anything, but I want to say hello to everyone who's watching us live, and of course, Silvio. Otobrat is so special because not only the food, handcrafting, etc., but is the whole atmosphere it can breathe there. Sicily Autumn is one of the best nature spectacles in Sicily. We agree. Yeah, the and air yes. is so clean up there. And we've got Paul from Costa Rica. Paul, when are you coming back to Sicily? Because Paul is doing one of those things. He can't be country six months, so he's doing six months in uh, Costa Rica. Oh, Imagine that. That's a nice, that's a nice uh, place to be. Um, hi from Ireland. I'm looking for a house apartment in Achitreza. That's where we are. Achitreza area. Do you have uh, some house hunting tips? Let I me do. just uh, give you one real quick thing. So we just had a couple here, uh, Jen and Mike, and they were looking for an apartment and they didn't know what area. And what they did is go to different parts of Sicily and get a feel for 
could they see themselves living there? And they, Mike, uh, I'll never forget this. We're sitting in Achi Costello, which is right next to Achi Trezza, and we're having a drink outside in the piazza. And he's watching the kids play soccer and the people doing the passeggiat and everything he starts tearing up. He goes, oh, I can see myself living here for sure. But so my biggest advice for you, now we can go back and forth, is go to different parts of, of Sicily before you, you're welcome, before you decide on somewhere and, and feel it out. Now, I know there are a lot of things available in Acitrezza and um, Acireale, um area. Go to www.ideal lista.it and they have a lot of listings there i prefer facebook marketplace for archie costello or facebook marketplace generally okay there's a lot of for rent by owners there there's nobody in the middle okay uh and as i've said this a million times uh, duke tire kicking come here first make sure it's the area that you want to that you want to be in that's for sure yeah known as the world had a very interesting wait a sec let me just say b yes i did and i did videos uh, about the different um, styles and designs and uses. Um, Nona, I heard there is uh, an olive oil shortage in Spain. What is happening? Okay, go ahead. All right, here's what the story is. <clears throat> uh, expect your prices to skyrocket. I mean, to make a long story short for olive oil coming from Europe. Why? Well, Spain controls 75% of the market. Did you know that? How, they're like the 500-pound gorilla for olive oil, uh, for all of exports throughout the world mm-hmm. and also here. They've had a bad year in terms of wildfires and drought, as has number two and number three, Italy and Greece. All right. We've had a million wildfires. We've had a lot of drought. So they're ex- the EU is expecting the basic wholesale commodity price to go up between 30 and 50 percent. Yeah. So something that may cost you, say, 15 bucks uh, for a bottle of oil in the States is going to cost you substantially more. Um, you know, now what they do at the end of the year now in October, they start to put last year's production on stale, sale in the States. And uh, so if you want to buy it, the oil is still good. If you get closer to Christmas time, what they'll do in with the, the first arrivals that come from Europe, they'll blend, so to speak, the 2023 oil with the 2024 oil. OK, it'll blend it together. In other words, they'll take the old oil, oil from last year and this year, put it together. So those prices of brand new oil, you're not probably not going to see till springtime. So we've been stocking yeah. up on oil. Yeah. I've been always telling her, she went to Tuscany. I said, let's go get. Some Tuscan oil. Let's see what the Tuscan oil is like. But have you tried that one yet? No, I haven't. No. Opened. But generally speaking, Tuscan oil is a lighter in texture and complexity. Oh, and the color taste. is much lighter. Yeah, because yeah. we're used to that green. Uh, we have Nancy, Lance, Barbara, and Frank in Acitrezza watching us. I'll be seeing you guys in just a bit. How fun is that? They were they were on our tour. Questions, questions. I'm here for okay. questions. Uh, I'm a question guy. Question. Italy answer. needs to make easier for people to move to southern Italy. Southern Italy is losing its population. Let me, so let me answer lot, that question. Just before you do. And and you know what? Um, a lot of um, towns, you know, this one euro um, house thing is a uh, movement by some of the mayors to attract people to come here. Of course, you're never going to buy a house for one euro because you're going to have to uh, do a lot of reparations and, and house up to code and so forth. But there is a little bit of a movement um, trying to bring more people here to um, Sicily. Listen, to make a long, frank story short, right now they don't want you unless you have money. Okay, Why don't they want you? Because the Americans with this uh, dual citizenship applications, they're getting hung up in the migrant process, problem here. Okay, Right now, migrants are inundating Italy. They've had so many this year, more than they normally We've have. We've already exceeded last year. So. Right, already, right? Uh, and that's number one, the migrant issue, okay? Number two is the issue from South America, where there are literally millions of people who qualify for JS, for citizenship by blood from the countries of Chile, Colombia, Brazil, Ecuador, Ecuador, all those, because a lot of those people 
uh, the grandchildren of the fascist who after the Second World War fled to South America. Now the grandkids want to become citizens. Why? Because there's nothing going on in South America. So the consulates are loaded with applications, literally loaded, compounded by the fact that in the consulates where you not can have waits between two to three years just to get an appointment to see a consular official, um, they're not replacing those consular officials who uh, have retired because of budgetary reasons. So generally, they're slow walking these things. They're slow walking them also in the 1948 cases where you got to use a female line and you have to take a lawsuit there or even when you're coming here. Because now if you're coming here to file paperwork, you, you're going to have to go to the area that the paperwork originated. It's not a law, but if you... If you take your paperwork and you're Sicilian and you go up to north, they're going to say, why are you here? You belong in Sicily to file that paperwork. And what happens in Sicily and most of Italy is that the local uh, town halls called comunes, they don't know the process. They're, they're, they're also vastly overworked. So somebody comes in with a pack of stuff, you know, with, with stuff that's translated, apostilled, uh, has, uh, you know, legal memoranda attached to it. These are civil servants, right? They got, they got to work at their own pace. So right now is a tough thing. The first thing that you need to ask yourself, okay, about becoming a dual citizen, why do you want to do it? Do you really want to relocate here? If you want to relocate here, then do it, okay? How much is it going to cost you? Well, you could do it by yourself, and it'll probably cost you fifteen hundred or two thousand bucks by the time you figure the translation fees, the application fees, mm -hmm. or so forth. Or you can hire a process, uh, a, a, a process person. Uh, uh, these companies that are out there that'll do you for a fee, typically between six and seven thousand dollars. They'll do A to Z for you, and you know that's what you're gonna get. Now, when people say to me. Six or seven thousand dollars. That's that's highway robbery, right? I say to them, Well, why don't you try to be a European trying to get into the United States for a US citizenship uh, application? How much do you think those folks are spending? And the answer is someplace between fifteen thousand and twenty-five thousand to become a, a a US citizen. If you want to come here. There's, where there's a will, there's a way to do it, okay? Not to mention the whole thing of visas. So there's a lot of stuff going on right now. My advice to you is to keep yourself current, all right? And to, and to you know, frequently, you know, go to the Ministry of the Interior website or to the website of your local consulate in the town that you're, this area that you are, and keep abreast of the situation. But I think the threshold question is, why do I want to come here? Well, I want to do it because it'd be nice to have a thing. No, the Italians don't want you, really, because they're afraid that you're going to become a ward of the state. Because they know that the Americans know that there's free uh, education here and that there's free uh, health insurance here. And they don't want somebody like you not there's anything wrong with you, who hasn't paid into the system your entire life to come here and all of a sudden you're in a hospital where those uh, that is it's paid for by the, the tax burden of all Italians. So there's a little bit more institutional resistance going on, okay? Now, a lot of these service providers, they're all full of, you know, flowers and daisies, and this is known as not to be careful with these guys too, okay? Measure nine times, cut once if you get a high in one of these people. Ask for recommendations and bet them out pretty good. So that's what I wanted to say, Esther. Is that it? For that, yeah. I mean, it's just basically, you know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was good information. It was it good information? Yeah, it was very good information. Thank you, honey. All right, any more questions? We're ready for questions. All right, so the rest of the week, here's what we're doing. We're going to the cart museum tomorrow, Giuseppe Giuffrida's private cart museum. And then we're going to Ortigia, Siracusa. We're going to the city of Messina, Sabaca. 
So that those are the things we're going to be doing. I want to see if uh, when I, oh, I want to answer this question too. My smack wife, him. Danny Ford says to smack me. I love Danny Ford. You my wife, Danny Caroline, Ford? just received her Italian citizenship by uh, Giur Matrimoni yep. and now has the Italian passport. And it must be a great feeling. And I do have to say that we, you know, I don't think, I respectfully just think differently. The people don't come here because of the free health care or the free education. They come here because it's Sicily. It's Italy. The food's better here. The lifestyle is different. I, do, I don't think those a lot of people. Every speaking. South American is coming here for the no, I'm free talking insurance. That's I'm, the talking, pasta. I'm talking about come Americans. Come on, will you please? I'm talking about Americans. They're coming here, they're coming here for the freebies, okay? okay? Why do you think every migrant is coming up from Africa? Wait, wait, wait. wait. That's a here. different it's, stop. It's, this is stop, the promised stop, stop. land. Stop, stop. This that is, is it. Okay, land. now I have to, please. Those migrants that are coming here from Africa are coming from conflict and war-torn African nations. They do not want to stay in Sicily. They want to go up north to Germany, France, England to work because there's no job here. We've interviewed them. We've done stories on them. They do not come here out for free health care, free blah, 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 blah. I'm talking, and also I'm talking about Americans. The mass, vast majority of the Americans who are your clients, who are, are it, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. You want to come here because of the lifestyle. A lot of people have, uh, it's, a, it's a pride thing. Their grandparents or great-grandparents were uh, Sicilian, and they want to have the same passport. There's a, a lot of reasons in from All what right. I, wait a sec. I'll it's not, it's not. Before because, I interrupt you. No, 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 I'm because gonna, you, gonna had, gonna you had, you had a 10, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, you had 10 Esther. minutes. Sorry. The migrant, let's agree to disagree on this issue. The migrant issue is a completely different issue. This year, we've almost had almost double last year, mm -hmm. if I'm not wrong, uh, over 100,000 migrants capsized boats. They land here. They come from Africa. Lampedusa, which is one of the islands that they land first, is bursting at the seams. The Italian government can't afford to keep these migrants. And, and remember, during COVID, they had to have that whole testing thing. So it's a completely different thing in the processing of these migrants, right? Because they probably didn't come with papers and they do not want to stay here in Sicily. Let's do a whole Can other. I, let me just say there one thing. Wait a minute. I've got to say one thing. How many how many people do you think worldwide are eligible for uh, Italian citizenship through uh, the, the the jury single jury uh, issue? The answer is seventy million people worldwide could be recognized in Italy. That's Italy a, has a seventy million. Seventy wow. million. Wow. Okay. Italy has a population of sixty nine million. Okay. Yeah. Number two, the average unemployed Italian who has no job, and there are a lot of them. He gets 600 euro a month for social benefits, 600 to 700 a, a month if he has kids, okay? Migrants, they come off the boat, and most of them, the vast majority of them, by the way, are men, young men with a thousand yard stare in their face. They're getting 35 euro a day to live. 30, they're getting more money to house migrants coming over here than unemployed and uh, starving Sicilians. So that's what the right says. Basta così. This is berserk, and that's why Maloney is now the prime minister. They're going to try to tighten it up. And unfortunately, like I said 10 minutes ago, the whole citizenship thing, the dual citizenship thing, is getting caught up or is now caught up in the migration issue. Yeah. This is the point I was trying to make. Okay. Uh, when I come to Sicily, uh, always feels like my second home because it's the homeland of my relatives. I know exactly because I've heard this before. Sherry, I hope you see your you and your sister again. I it, and I would come for the love of Sicily. It's our peace of mind. That's why we are coming back in November. Back, make sure you message me. Would love to. There's a question here. Okay. Uh, the same problem here in the U.S. I know in Let the me, whole world. Wait a second. I don't yeah. want. I don't want to go. I don't want to talk. I don't about want this end. Look, perfect. Let okay. Is it easier to go through my husband for citizenship or my grandparents? Well, if your husband is a citizen, right? uh, are you going to take it now? No, that's all right. Yours. You said you didn't want me I'm to asking, do it, so now you're asking. No, so I, I don't want to talk okay. about the migrants. starting next to you too. By the way, right now you can go back to 
uh, a descendant who was alive in it till, uh, way back to 1861, okay? You could even use your great-grandfather, okay? That's going to change. Under the new legislation that's coming back, you're only going to be able to go back to your grandfather, not your great-great-grandfather like you could right now. So there's got to be, and there's a lot of legislation in the parliament right now, okay, being presented by the white, who, by the way, are in the majority. Yeah. They're, they're in the majority. But wait a minute, one thing. You can come here for with nothing. You don't have to be a citizen, okay? You can come here for 90 days with your American passport, and then you could leave the uh, EU for 90 days, and then you can come back for 90 days. So that's six months a year. Yeah. So you want to buy a place? This why is someone you, different. This okay, is wait a minute. Why different. don't you and your son, or you and a relative, or you and your pal, buy a place this here, a which you can do, now. and you come and you guys alternate like a like those plates, those a timeshare. You guys can do that, and you can both have a nice life. Paul says, "Okay, let's change the topic. Places to explore, taking into account my mobility issues." Okay, that's a great question, Paul. Hmm. Okay, um, so he's going to stay in Castellamare. I met Paul during our what tour. kind of mobility um, issues? He's got, he can walk a little bit, but he does have a scooter, if I remember. A what, those little thingy scooters? I think so. All I right. think so, if I remember it uh, correctly. And it is uh, trying in some places to have, I would say, you know, places to explore that are flat, that aren't very hilly. Um, Achitreza, Achicostello are great places. I've told you that before, Paul, to come because Achicostello, for instance, it's all flat. Achitreza at the bottom level you know, the Lungamare, it's all flat. And those are two towns right next to each other that are uh, pretty nice to explore. Uh, Giardini Naxos is flat. You don't have the hills that you have um, over in Tarmina. So there are pockets of places that you can come uh, in a score. Avila is a great one. Good Jella, one. Jella is flat. Avila is definitely uh, one of those flat, uh, big, big cities. Up top, up top, you've got uh, between Palermo and... Uh, Palermo uh, on the A20, almost that whole area is flat off the A20 highway. There are some little towns. Right? Uh, yeah. But he's going to Castellamare. Scopello and Zingaro are definitely a little bit too. Oh, oh how about San Vito Lo Capo? Paul, did you go there? San Vito Lo That's Capo. That's flat. That's flat as yeah. can be. Um, okay, let me see here. Oh, he uses a walker. Okay, he uses a walker. Okay. Um, Nick says Italian consulates around the world have internationally slowed down the process of granting qualifying people for citizenship. It can be years from the initial appointment. Thank it's you, right, it's Nick. happened. Yeah, it's happened. Um, can you think a Palermo is flat? True, but he's done Palermo. I know for a fact he's yeah, done. Yeah, Palermo is flat. He's done Palermo. Catania is even flat. Catania. Paul, come to Catania. That's a town. That's a city you have to explore. Yeah, that's for flat. Sure. I would say Catania. For sure. And Only that whole area. 25% of Sicily from, is flat. From, the other 75 is mountains. From Catania all the way to all the Achis, Achi Castello, Achi Trezza, uh, parts of Achi Reale. So there's plenty to do here. And that actually, mobility issues is something that has come up numerous times. And there are ways around it. Like, for instance, in Tarmina, you can even rent a scooter. Uh, from the yeah. British, from the British pharmacy. So there are ways that you girl. can, um, you know, go around. But I do have to say, my first time here in 2014, nine years ago, there were less handicap accessible places. They are getting much better, but they are nowhere near uh, where they are in the United States. You know, no, you think about the supermarkets. Now I, I'm seeing more and more supermarkets where they do have handicap accessible areas where you can enter. But for instance, restaurants and things like that could be some difficult. Next, the next question. Okay. Uh, no, no, my reason to come would be for the lifestyle. Thank you. I have all my paperwork, but can't get an appointment at the consulate. So I decided to come as a tourist. I'll leave the paperwork for <laughs> my kids. Brava, no, no. Well, you can come here and, and file yourself if you want. What are the costs for that? Around five grand. By the Thanks, time everyone. It's for the idiot. Et Great. Great, Paul. Let us know. Um, good morning. We are planning to be in Sicily in December for a month. Any advice? My grandfather is from Campobella, Mazzarla. 
we have been there several years ago and want to do some research. I'll tell you something, Alan. If you are around Sicily in December, you are in for a feast because starting around December 4th, all the way to the, the La Bafana, which is January 6th, Six, yeah, like uh, January 6th, there's one festival after another, and there's a lot of beautiful festive lights. Um, you know, the tiniest Christmas market. Well, there are Christmas markets that actually everywhere. In Caltagirone, they have the nativity scenes all everywhere, over place. all over the place. Um, it is really a magical place here. And if you're around on New Year's Eve, couple de año, at great parties, we're going to be in uh, Tarmina again. So I'm looking forward to that. So December is a great time of the year to come here. And it's still not that cold, believe it or not. I think the yeah. coldest month in Sicily is January. It's also it's wet. You know, it's a little wet. bit rainy by February, it's getting warmer, but December is a very, in the past few years, you know, I don't know, the weather has been changing a lot all over the world. So I don't know what the temperatures will be here, but it never, you know, up by us in Achitrezza, it had, didn't go down um, below 50s. And the other thing I would say, it's a great time to explore Sicily because there's not a lot of tourists. So you've got Sicily all to yourself. I mean, there will be tourists, but it's really a great time to go into those bigger, you know, perfect time for time, you know, Syracuse, uh, those type of touristy cities. Uh, are you coming to the West Coast or East Coast? Let, let us know. Okay. Oh, Sherry, awesome. We'll be looking at all those festivals in December. Hey, I want to make an announcement for you expats that know me and are around here. For Thanksgiving, anybody around here for Thanksgiving? She's abandoning me. She's going home for three weeks. Okay, that means I'm going to be all, all abandoning all, all me. alone for Thanksgiving. Uh. So if any of my friends, my expat friends, I want to have. I, I talked to my friend. He can make it some turkey for me. If you want to come over to my house for Thanksgiving? We please private message me. I want to get maybe six or eight people, and then we could, we could. What do that things call on on WhatsApp? We could WhatsApp Esther when she's home. That'd be fun to do. Um, Silvio says, Esther, please don't forget to say that the temperatures here in December last year in Christmas Day. Yeah. It 20, was, yeah, it was 24 it, degrees. 24, now, which is. In the 60s. In the 60s. It is such a wonderful time for sure. Um, Chow, how good are the local medical practitioners for non-emergency care? That is colds, flu, getting. Yeah. I'll tell you that because I. Let me just tell you that the pharmacist, my pharmacist is the best. And you can get a lot of medication here over the counter, like antibiotics, that you have to have a medical um, uh, prescription back at home. My doctor, and he is a doctor because here at pharmacies, you have to have at least one person who's a, a, a doctor. He's, I mean, he's not like a medical doctor, but he is a pharmacist and they call them doctor. He is brilliant. Anytime I have anything, he'll prescribe me whatever I need. Um, if I have a fever or, or a cold or flu, everything that you just mentioned, the pharmacy can help you. So I hope that helps you, Jennifer. I can answer Nick's question. Uh, Alfred, do you know how much the SISMA bonus deduction when it comes to buying property please can you first tell us what sisma bonus okay what they try is. to do is they're trying to repopulate areas that have low population yeah all right which means that obviously it's not going to apply to catania it's not going to apply to palermo it's going to apply to the little it's mountain towns. Yeah, right. so, yeah. so that should that should put up a, a red flag right off the get-go a depopulated community it's seven percent Okay, so you'll get a, a re reduction on your taxes for seven, the first time taxes. It's almost like a first time home buyer. Typically, when you buy a house here, you're going to pay between five and seven or eight percent. You're going to pay half of that amount, the buyer and the seller. But under these programs over there, they're either waiving it all or something like that. But, you know, you're in a small little community. All right. And that's the problem is that you're in a small and it's very inaccessible. It's with me, I tell my people who want to buy, well, what's what are you what's important to you? Are banks important? Uh supermarkets important? Are schools important? 
you need to put a punch list of what you is an ATM access important. Well, we just like it should be even wider where is cultural activities that's is the other cities thing. Right. Uh, do you want to be near an airport to me those are the more important things do you want to be in a very heavily populated place do you want to be by the sea do you want to be on the mountain so for me those are i mean everyone has an atm a bank a, a well in the smaller like towns sometimes they don't work e. i mean i don't know what it's like to go to the madonia mountains in one of those small little towns i'm not going to recommend to someone buy a house in a small little community i don't think i ever have Okay. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, especially pe people who are, I guess you could say, you know, seasoned people, you know, veterans uh, in terms of age. And then okay? you have to think Being about it. Being ambulatory, like, like yeah. one person says, you know, he's got a walker. Okay. I'm not going to say to him, you know, go to the Madonia Mountains. You can get a good hike. Forget <laughs> that. I'm not going to do that. Or even Etna, or, you know, one of these communities over here. Everything's like on a hill. Where I live, we're on a hill. And I have a bad knee. And believe me, I cuss all the time. I really do. Going upstairs, two, three flights of stairs. Most of the apartment buildings, if they're on the four floors, they don't have they don't have elevators in them. So you have Here. to walk up. Walk Let up me show you where we live. Give you a little bit of a view. A little view of our, oh, by the way, look at the pretty flowers we just bought. There's some ceramics. And there's our view. Now that is not dried over there. It's because we had a massive fire. So there you go. There's our ceramics, our sun, and there you go. On that note, I've got, oh, you have some housekeeping. Of course he does. Let's take two more questions and then we'll uh, we do our housekeeping, okay? Take two more. Um, Let's do the housekeeping. Um, thank you, Peter Scapoletti, for saying hit the bu uh, like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe so you get updated and notifications when we go live or when we have videos. I'm telling you right now, the next video that's going to go up is from Otto Brata. And that's it. Peter Scapoletti, as soon as I get home, the end of October, I'll give you a call. We're going to hook up for lunch, okay? Mm -hmm. so I'm not going to forget that. All right. Um, I just have a couple of housekeeping. Go ahead, honey. First of all, I want to thank Esther for <laughs> today was a very stressful day for this woman because she's got a large group, something like 17 and 19 people she's been escorting around. They went up to es uh, Zephyrana and she literally got here. <laughs> At, well, wait at a second. Three fifty-six. So, so this time, is four minutes before show. Well, time. this is what happened. We were supposed to record the show earlier in the week, so I would have it in the can and you guys could watch it. But yeah. someone decided to take a three-hour nap during my little bit of break I had, so we didn't. And then, so this morning we tried to film it here, but like in this spot right here, but the sun was coming up, so it was in our eyes. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go live. Next week, we will have um, uh, the Ottobrata and some other things. Hey, I want to know what Wait you a minute, guys, I wasn't finished. I want to know what you, I know. I'm was... not finished with what I'm saying. All right, all right. I want to know. Uh, I know some of you guys like this live um, content like this, and we're going to try to do this about once a month. But what else from Sicily would you like to see more of? Of course, we have always foods and festivals and, you know, events and things like that. But what else? And probably we'll have to do a video with you about citizenship. Just he's just. asking for uh, Paul's asking for an elective residency. What's the time wait for that? That's a lot quicker because first of all, that's done online, zip zip, all right. And the, typically that's a lot quicker, few months. What you have to have though is a signed rental contract. If you do that, that's another thing. What I do is I do uh, consultations with people who are who want to explore visas and citizenship, okay? I charge a fee for that. I charge an initial consultation fee. And then if for people who want to do it themselves, I do a coaching fee. But you're going to have to retrieve the U.S. Uh, documents. I, myself and Massimo, retrieve anything in actually all of the EU, from Italy, Sicily, et cetera. We've been doing it for many, many years. So if some of you people want to book a consultation, simply um uh Contact suggest me, the over here and, and but i want to finish talking okay. with, um, honey, wait a minute I, no i've got to go wait Sorry. a second one more second okay so anyways 
You think it's easy coordinating uh, 22 people or however many people she has, and then she has to drag me around who basically interferes in everything that she does? The answer is no. <laughs> so, so today she did goodbye. She did a great job today. And don't forget, if you oh, like our bantering, right? Wait a second. Join this. our community. We have a vibrant community. There's a button over there. It says join now for the cost of less than a cup of coffee. You could become a member and you could help us offset the production costs and the travel costs, which, by the way, are like eight bucks a gallon. Wait, I want to show right now. Oh, oh this to... was my tra traffic jam. Look at this. This is why. I... <laughs> they were just passing over here. This is what Sicily is all about. That's what Sicily is all about. So, so anyway, okay. don't forget the Sicilian project, us nonprofit. We're starting. Uh, we're starting next week. In in where are we starting? In, in Connie Cutty. Connie Love Kati. you guys. <laughs> we do a lot of stuff. Okay. So, anyways, I got all the thing I wanted to say, and now we're gonna go eat dinner. Arriba that too. Love you. Thank you so much. Ciao. For Sorry.